This is Judge Joe Brown, and we're listening to We All Be News. News Free Dixie for the 21st century. All right, We All Be is happy to have on once again, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, uh, scholars and laymen, the one and only 2011 Lifetime We All Be Lifetime Achievement winner, and also extraordinary activist, artivist, humanitarian, nutritional guru, the one and only master teacher, Brother Dick Gregory. Are you there? I bless you. I'm fantastic. Peace and love to you and and the family. And I cannot tell you enough to thank you for being there. It's really making a difference on this planet, shows like yours. Because, see, I'm 80 years old. When I came on the planet in America, there wasn't but three networks that controlled everything. And they could write the script. It had nothing to do with how the news went down. And they could make you look at what they wanted you to, and anything else didn't count. And so now we have not just you, but about 40,000 Internet radio in America alone, not much the world. So when you look at, 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 at Julius with WikiLeaks, I mean, the world will not be the same anymore because of what he released. So people who call themselves intelligence thought they was getting the truth. And then when you find out the truth ain't the truth, you don't change it. We proved that with the Iraqi war. They, were, they lied and said he had all kinds of nuclear weapons, and then we find out they was lying. We keep fighting. We keep sending our children. Keep going ourselves. And so I'm sure this is where the Romans was right before they fell. This is where the Greeks was right before they fell. And all of us, the one great thing that Abraham Lincoln said and angered everybody up north, most of the people, when he said, slavery is American problem, they went out their mind. That's the first time anybody said it was a problem other than southern problem. So when, when they challenged him, what do you mean? It's a, uh, I said, well, let me just put it this way, the textile industry in New York textile industry in London and Europe make more money in one week off the cotton coming out the South than the slave owners make in five years. Mm-hmm. And then Lincoln said something which was kind of interesting. See it happening now. What Lincoln said, one day, before all this gets cleared up, for every whooplash you the back of the Negro slave will come back to you. Hmm? A thousand times over. And then he said, and every penny's worth a drop of free labor you got out of the slave, you will pay it back a trillion times. We're seeing that now. Hmm. We're looking at that now. What, what, you got white folks leading the front in guns, control, gun law. Well, let me tell you. You go back to the 60s, we called it rebellion. White folk called it <clears throat> riots. But what happened is, you start looking at TV in the evening news and you saw white men taking their wives to, to gun uh, training schools because they had this horrible thing. Now, while I'm at work, the ghetto is not too far from my suburb, so he teach her how to shoot. Didn't realize that all the stuff she been taking off of him, two reasons. One, take care of deals. How my children going to get to school if I leave? But when you get upset and outraged, those things don't hit your mind until you make a decision. So white women killing their husbands and white husbands killing their wives increased almost 200%. Because, you know, there never been a gun in the house. And not only did she have a gun, now they learn how to shoot it. Mm. And so when you stop and think about that, what fear, fear, fear will do, and not to mention the suicide rate went up. There's a whole lot of people want to commit suicide. Suicide is just a split second. That's what's so awful about suicide. 
if if I owe a hundred thousand dollars and I don't see what's coming from, I blew my brains out. And five minutes later, I thought I hit the lottery. He can't undo it. <laughs> That's right. It's gone. That's right. But that changed, and now they're running out buying guns. You see, when you look at what happened in Connecticut, and two weeks later, gun sales increased forty-one percent. That's fear, fear, fear. See, you must remember. There's two trends of thought. All the, the whites are hired for me. My research, I say, you can't think for me. Because all white folks is born in America with 300 years of white privilege. Well, I had a friend of mine, Steve Jaffe, he said, not me. I say, like complacent Negroes have a privilege. Mm-hmm. But you, it, it's worse when you don't know it. Hmm? President of the United States can go to... New York City tonight, Chicago, Memphis. It's by itself. Nobody knows who he is. And you can take a, a white, no read, no write, ain't talk, and him next to the president in New York, and he'll get a cab for the president. Well, oh. That's white privilege. And so consequently, when you stop and think about the time we spend in preparation or changing a mindset. Well all that's about to end now. And and, and so that's why you, you you can never use the universal God. I'm not talking about the church as a pit bull. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't put it to be no pit bull. And so consequently when we look and see you see there's a church which is cool. I mean they black folk or they get down. And there's the universal God. We hooked to the church. God ain't hooked to nothing like a Catholic church where you you you, you do all kind of sodomizing to little children. And and we think that's connected to some kind of universal the same law that, that built the dinosaur and the mountains and put every grain of sand on the planet. We stupid enough to think that God has something to do with that. We stupid to believe that there's a real God that sent the universe, and that God says, "Fear me, fear the violation." I got ten children. My ten children feared me. Y'all know I'm crazy. Mm. Huh? Somewhere, I'm a jealous God. Jealousy. You know how many people get killed in America, in the world, because of jealousy? And you're gonna tell me that that God, my no good daddy man, but of all the crap he did. If I didn't obey him, he couldn't burn me. And you're going to tell me when I die, I'm going someplace. And if that God don't put you, it's going to burn me. Well, I don't want to be with that God. huh? Mm. You're going to burn me? And I know my daddy couldn't do that? It, 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 no, no, no. And so now you got people asking questions. These youngsters are asking questions. He said, wait a minute, hold it, hold it up. My mother didn't know King James. Let me tell you, my mother, and I think I told you this before, yes, walked sir. into your studio, mm-hmm. and and she's so precious and kind and sweet. <laughs> you think God just spit her out. Hmm? And she would stomp you to death because she didn't know. She told my mother, Jesus Christ wasn't a Christian. She didn't know Christianity didn't start until 200 years after he was dead. <laughs> She didn't know that, and and she didn't know King. But see, King James was one great thing about that oodlum thug. He didn't lie. He told the truth. And this is my version. He didn't say God, Buddha, Muhammad, <laughs> Jesus, Christian. He said, "This is my version." And King James, he was king of England. He was such a weird, strange. Homosexual. He hated women so bad he killed his mama. His lover was Lord Buckingham, who Buckingham Palace is named after. Mm-hmm. And so when you stop and think about, you know, where we are on our way now and how this thing is moving, you know, I look at the Catholic Church and I go into these big cathedrals all over the world and you see the little goblin, the men with the wings on and you see them little two-year-old boys, three-year-old, four-year-old, with no panties on, 
naked with them angel wings and not one little baby girl. They're not shame of pedophilia. It's part of their makeup. It's part of what they're doing. Mm-hmm. We see it and just think we're looking at a great, oh, look at the big 16 chapel. That's what happens when you're locked into a church that's been doing, you know, the Ken folks as preachers. They don't know. Martin Luther King, great preacher, he don't know that that trick been for 3,000 years. Huh? Mm. I mean, there's something wrong. With, with everybody tell me 2,000 years ago Jesus Christ came to the planet. I'm 80 years old. I was born 80 years ago. They were saying that then. You mean don't nobody age out this deal but me? <laughs> I mean, at least, at least, if you're going to run it on me, let Jesus now be 2080. Mm-hmm. And then we take all of that and we push it off to the children, and they march to war. What is a Christian soldier? They march to war singing that. On what Christian soldier? And then you mix that with our own ignorance. For instance, when the Romans killed you, the state, they had different ways of killing you, beheading you, to hanging you. The cross was a special thing. The cross was for revolutionaries. It was the most dangerous thing to the state. Revolution, rebellious. We didn't have radio and TV and shows like this. So to to let the people know the price you pay for rebelling, revolting, they put you on a cross and let you stay up there three days. And then people had no cars or trains or buses. So for three days they could walk by there and see you and know you the buzzards picking your skin and Maggots coming out from the hot sun. Oh, wow. I, I don't never want to be a revolutionist. I don't mind robbing a banker, killing somebody. Banker, but a revolutionist? Today, we don't need crosses so people can walk by and see. We got radio, television, and the news media around the world for plane crash and that. In, in Budapest today, those bodies in 10 minutes would be in your living room. That's how quick this thing is. Right. And so what we have now is TV, radio, shows like that. So to deal with a revolutionist, they shoot you. And it's all over the world in seconds, and it stays there. They got the funeral and all of that. That's what happened to King. That's why they killed King that way. Okay, Malcolm, huh? Kennedy boys, mm. Ben Loudon. All is it the accident? All of them died the same way, gunned down, assassinated. Because I don't need you to come by and see a cross the news make a ticket right over. Here's the price you pay for rebelling like King, like Malcolm. Mm. And so when you stop and look at the white folks that joined us, Miss LaRusso shot down the three civil rights workers. Shot down, I don't need to cross. I got the news media will take this, huh? Except when we didn't want them to. I mean, they killed the slaves and lynched them. They weren't lynching slaves because they was rebelling. They were lynching because my hate I have for you, because my fear of you. And all we got to do is just listen to them. We say, well, white folks are uh, dead. We was. Uh, Three fifths of a person. They said, well, three fifths of a man. That was that didn't go back. I said, no, 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 no. Come on. That didn't come from there. Supreme Court said that. What do you mean? Well, the white boys down south, when they come up with electoral colleagues in America, and electoral colleagues for every state was was on the population. So then the slave said, wait a minute. Are you going to count me as one when I own all these slaves? Huh? All these slaves. Look at them. So they went to court. They lost. We kept going to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said, yeah, you're right. 
here on in, we'll count your slaves as three-fifths of a person. That's where that came from. The one thing we didn't hear is when a bitter, evil system that hates me because they're scared of me, because they feel who I am and the real ones know who I am. Mm-hmm. And so listen to what they said. This is not somebody that liked me, loved me. He said, if you have one thirty second of Negro blood, you never did that? Right. You're a Negro, right? Yeah. Listen what my enemy said. In order to equal one black person, I've got to put 32 white people next to him. That's what that means. If you have one thirty second of Negro blood, you are a Negro. And yet, I didn't know that. That's the fear they have. And white supremacy, my mama thought white supremacy was a cool plan. White folks, <laughs> they don't know. The white ain't a color, it's an attitude. And if you ain't got trillions of dollars in this, you can't be white. If I took over this country today, the first thing i do is make all black folks sign a declaration apologizing to white folks. Because most of white folks, we mad at. They couldn't help us if they liked us. You see that little hillbilly, raggedy, hobo, white boy walking out of here? Now, now, what has he got that you need? And remember, can we be stupid enough to believe some of the richest people in the world is white Americans? And you can believe that them powerful white men, huh? let them ignorant rednecks determine public policy? Come on, y'all. I don't know. You do it because you're scared to mess with real power. Hmm? Mm. That's why you hit your child when that child gets 21 years old, six foot four, 280 pounds. You can go hit him. Hmm? <laughs> that's what that's about. And so when you stop and change and put all of it together that we've been through, huh? and we keep mm. pushing it to the side, pushing it to the side. I was coming back from France the other day. Interesting thing happened. I'm sitting next to a guy mm-hmm. that owns one of the largest paper mills in the world. Mm. And so I said, you from Paris? you from Paris? Yeah, yeah. Well, how'd you know? I said, because of Haiti. He said, what do you mean? I said, when the greatest military leader at that time was Napoleon. Whoop anybody he wanted to Went to Haiti, we'll teach him, and got beat up, lost the war. Wait a minute, they don't talk about it because they don't want you to know. How did he lose the war? Haiti didn't have no guns, they didn't manufacture nothing. They had sugarcane bamboo that they'd sharpen spoons down huh? mm. and hooked it on them and had them some big guns that they took off ships that come by there trying to steal, up on the mountain. So they said, oh, my God, what happened? Now, the difference between real folks and scared folks, they were, let me see, uh, let's send our scientists over there. The soldiers are trained to kill and, and, and order, you know, a general. Military people are the lowest people on the planet. They would shoot at God if the company commander told them to. Mm. See, wars are won not by armies killing armies. Wars are won by killing the women and the children. What I mean? Well, anytime you pick up the paper and you hear that they bombing the city, they bombing the munitions plant, all the men's on the front line, the women and the children back there making the bombs. That's who they killing? Mm. Mm. Ain't nobody in the neighborhood. Huh? They all up front. So then they, after they whooped them, then American, France and them came in. said, let's negotiate. How are you going to negotiate a whooping? I won. He well, you got to pay us or the fight going to keep on. Said, well, wait a minute. You can change the law? I won. 
<laughs> now you tell me. I had to pay. Yes, you had to pay me. I said, okay, so America and them thugs and they negotiated. They said, yeah, it'd be about oh two billion dollars for all of this. Come on, you got to be telling. Well, we're gonna get two to three billion dollars. Oh, come on. All these trees, it was paid off in trees. Now let me stop. If you go around the world, and the best furniture in the world is a French antique, yes, that's them trees out of Haiti. Mm. Huh? That's right. That's why Haiti has such ecological problem. They stole all of the wealth that the universal God gave them. So then when the the good old boys, the scientists, black folks, said, we got to do something to help. You're not qualified. You come with some emotions, you're not qualified. If your, what they call that thing that your show comes out of, they call them. So what, what thing was you talking about? What is it? The cables, all the stuff, the, trans, the transmitter. Okay. If your transmitter blew out, you're not qualified to fix it. Mm. So what makes black folks think you're qualified to fix something that have gone on for five centuries, huh? That's right. It's still in you, huh? And so consequently, there's going to come a day. You see, like, like how many thousands of people got free off death row mm-hmm. because of DNA? Right. DNA didn't happen when Harvard and Yale and MIT said it happened. DNA was here the first day the universal God put this planet here. Hmm? We just moved to the elevated level where we could discover it. Yeah, that's the word they use, like they created, huh? Mm. Now, let me tell you what they'd be able to do one day. They'd be able to sniff out racism. Okay? With a dog, just like they do hmm, with cocaine and marijuana. Sniff it out. And white folks, so being for a rude awakening, when a hundred years from now, you won't be able to get a job because the thing going to be so mellow and clean, I'll be scared of a lawsuit and the insurance companies will sniff you out when you get your medical care just like they do now. You'll get a job at the post office, they check you for, for drugs. They'll check you for racism and, 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 and sexism and black folks for meanness. To a white racist system. That's a violation. And so consequently, when you sit and you look, so I'm sitting on the plane. Mm-hmm. This white dude the other day, I'm coming back to go to uh, uh, the, the critic funeral in Chicago. Oh, uh, Roger Ebert. Roger Ebert. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, stopped in D.C. and changed planes. Guy told me who he was. I said, uh, "Where are you headed?" He says, "Well, I'm heading to a board. No, I'm heading to Salt Lake City, Utah. Listen to this now. I'm mm-hmm. to Salt Lake City. Oh, okay. So, yeah, the Mormons make more Bibles than anybody, mm-hmm. and we make most of the church Bibles around the world." Our paper meal. We also make the paper for cigarettes. <laughs> I, said, I said, no, you didn't say that. Mm. Hmm? The same company that makes the paper <laughs> for the Bible <laughs> makes the paper for the cigarette industry. Mm. We'll give you cancer and then you open the Bible and pray that it won't kill you. <laughs> the paper company. Hmm? Yes, sir. So, and so I said to him, I said, I teach my grandchildren, I take them to a paper mill where the pulp is. Paper mill, where the pulp is. I, I want you all to, and to you all that's listening, have you ever been on the highway and passed a paper mill? There is no stench like that. And I said, but there's one problem. The people that work there don't smell it. He said, yeah, and the company they get you. I said, that's us in America. Mm. 
We don't smell this filthy wench. We don't smell a system so vicious that a white woman who came up on the boat with him, his mama, his daughter, his girlfriend, his wife, didn't get the right to vote till 1921. His mother. Wow, man, if you treat your mother like that, my mother better not come out the house. <laughs> a system that says you have a right to have a trial or jewelry of your peers. That's what black folks still complain about. I don't get a jewelry of my peers. A white woman that was accused of anything couldn't get a jewelry of her peers because a woman couldn't vote. But she couldn't be on the jewelry. And so when you stop and think about all of this is still there, and we say we figured it out. My mama used to always I could tell my mama was mad at the rich white folks she worked for. Oh, she'd come home. Yeah. The Bible says a rich man got as much chance of getting into heaven as a Campbell had getting to Ivan Did you ever hear that, man? Yes, sir. And you can see that. You look at a little needle head getting through the eye of a needle. Look at that and think about how big a Campbell is. Now, you know you got to be stupid to make a statement like that. Until I found out one day what a needlehead is. You know them old Arabian cities? Mm-hmm. When you left one, going towards another one, or entering one, you see that arch, that big archway? Sorry. That's a needlehead. Now, it makes sense. Now, as a little child, I can sit and see a camel getting through the eye of a needle, and all it means... The bigger the load, the more you got to stoop, huh? Mm-hmm. That's what means getting through a needle's head. You got to bend down. With all your riches, with all your companies and all that, it didn't say you couldn't get in. You just have to stoop. My mama didn't know that. Right now. It's the Bible. Well, the Bible says, spare the rod and spawn the child. Wow, look at you. Had a rod and spawned a child. Hmm. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, that story is about a shepherd boy. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And all shepherd boys carry that little leather. Look like a stick. That's to aim the sheep when they get too close to the ledge. You don't hit them. You just aim them. Direct them. Right. We have taken that and interpreted that that God say, beat me. Hmm? And so you look, they got fantastic research now that shows that 98% of your violent, criminal, hate, sex crimes, the men, the horrible beatings at home. That's why all at once we elevated to the level. If you're a school teacher and I'm a child come to school and you see bruises on me, you can be arrested if you don't call the police, huh? Mm. And then you got black folks. There ain't no shame. Uh, uh, ain't nobody going to tell me. Governor ain't going to tell me how to raise them. <laughs> okay. I don't hear y'all talking that way about police brutality. I used to hear the old black folk when I was, I was a cop beat up man, but lucky he didn't kill you, boy. Oh. Mm-hmm. Do you realize what a violation it is? You're the number one thief in town. And I'm teaching my children when they get close to you, behave yourself. Don't make him mad. Are you crazy? What God are you into? You're going to teach your child about respecting a cop that might shoot you 40 times in the back of your head, huh? Mm-hmm. And one day, when this new thought trend hit the planet, then cops will get some protection. But remember the ether. When you was a little boy, were you like most of us, one of the fire trucks for Christmas? I'm, I'm asking you the question, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, did you ever... Know anybody that wanted a police car for Christmas? Uh, not to my knowledge. Maybe Cowboys and Indians. Mm-hmm. See how the universe works? Mm. You didn't know. Nobody told you. Why didn't little one? It's in your blood. It's in your ether. Mm. Mm. It's there. 
I was a little boy, I prayed. Every time I hear siren, I would pray. I didn't know where they're going. I'd pray for them and, and where they were going. Cops, I'd pray for them. Now I see what a whole lot of police departments do. And men look the other way. It's like right. when you see it, your police do something, you hear everybody, the mayor, but it, well, well, all cops are not like that. When a, when a, when a doctor kill you because they gave you the wrong diagnosis, you don't hear everybody say, all cops don't do that. So, wait a minute, why do y'all have to say right. that? Hmm? And so, consequently, here's the payback. Hmm? The payback. God ain't going to get nobody. The same God that created the Germans created the Jews. The same God that created the slave owner created the slave. Are y'all out your mind? Here is one of the few countries in the world that cops carry guns. See, see, the police was invented by the Egyptians. Mm. I hate to say that word because... The reason they give all the credit to the Egyptians for the pyramid and all of that, the pyramid was built 6,000 years so there was Egyptian on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Because the Egyptian is the lightest African on the continent of Africa, okay? Mm-hmm. It's like that old tramp dog over there in Cuba. Oh, but, but wait a minute, do you realize 78% of Cuba is blacker <laughs> than midnight? Mm. But you don't see none of me in this boy's cabinet. <laughs> you don't see nobody with no authority or power. Hmm? Who is Castro? Hmm? I mean, who is Castro? Hmm? Mm. And so when you stop and think, it's like everybody hollering and screaming about J.D. And, and his lady went over there first. Well, you were how close J.D. is to the President of the United States. I mean, I, I don't have any idea. It's like he's pretty close. He can go in and out anytime he wants. Okay. So there's no way him being that close to the president, he would embarrass the president. Out of all the places he can go, right? Right. He go there. Why? Was the president probably sending him to take a message? Hmm? Hmm. Hmm? When you looked at the, my 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 basketball player, Did it wrong, in North Korea. Uh, North Korea. Hmm? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everybody think he's a fool, five rings in his nose, so nobody would expect he was bringing a letter from the State Department hmm? and the Pentagon, right? Right. Nobody would suspect that. And so that's where the game is, huh? And then if you and I go to North Korea today, that's on our off limits. That's a felony, huh? How come? Mm. How come you ain't in there? How come they talking more about Jay Z going than him? And then after that thing started happening in North Korea, they started talking about blowing up this and blowing up that. Let me say something to you. And I, most of the time, what I say, you can you can pull it up in computer. Mm-hmm. I research and look for. Almost a year before they could find what I'm thinking. North Korea is one of the richest countries in the world. Hmm? You hear me? Right. North Korea is one of the richest countries in the world. Why? Because there's a metal called tungsten. Thousands of years. What nothing you could do with tungsten. Just like nappy hair. Right. And then one day we find out nappy hair cure cancer. Everybody wanted it. How this thing be sold in the black community? Be kink quick. Every black man trying to kink their hair so they can sell it on the market. Kink quick. Hmm? Well, that's what Thompson was like. Nobody needed it because Thompson, you put it in different metals, and it would harden it so it could go through the temperature change. Hot, cold, hot, cold. When we send people out of space, it goes through hot, cold, then reentry. You see that fire, right? Right. Nobody needed it. Most we had in America in the wintertime, the railroad train uh, would pop. Hmm? But that wasn't that much. So then all at once, they discovered (laughs) that you couldn't be in the missile race, the space race. You couldn't participate in radar. 
because of the temperature. Now, <laughs> Korea, 99% of all the tungsten comes out of there. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, see, it wasn't no two Koreas. It was one. And the rebels was mad about how they was being treated. So then America said, wow, the secret's out. We just found out, but it's out. Whoever gets the Thompson, nobody else can get in the space race. Nobody else can get in the missile race. Nobody can be in the radar. It's impossible. So we went over there and went to the south and declared war on the, the rebels. We can't let them. That's what this was about. What no two countries? And they fought us to a standstill. Well, wait a minute. Back then, it was segregated army. White and black didn't fight next to each other. Mm-hmm. So when I look at them blacks, Coming back, all cut up, chopped up. He's my friends in high school. They said, man, something ain't right. You know, we got over that Mangchun River. We didn't see number Chinese. That's who we fighting if we go there again today. Hmm. That's where China gets its tungsten from, okay? Right. And they share it with Russia. Hmm. Hmm. And so, that's what that's about. Okay? So basically, it's going to be World War Three if we do huh? anything, right? It's going to be World War Three officially, what? if it- uh, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. If we go into war with North Korea, it's going to be World War Three. No, it ain't going to be no shit. That's okay. Uh, see, you know, I live in a country that hook up with a bunch of white folks all over the world and think everybody's stupid but them, and anybody have a nuclear bomb but them is 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 is, is, is hoodlums and thugs and animals, and yet we the only one that ever dropped a nuclear bomb. <laughs> And that's what, you know what that means? What, what does it mean? America dropped the nuclear bomb. And the, um, some unarmed people. Hmm? Hmm. 98% of all the war material the Japanese was making was coming out of Tokyo. We didn't bomb Tokyo till the last couple of weeks of the war. Wait a minute. Nobody on the planet at that time had B-52s that could fly from Guam I went all the way there and back. And y'all didn't blow up where the ammunition? When when General MacArthur got over there and found out the trick we put him in, that's when he said, I will return. Remember that great statement? Right, right. He, he didn't say, we will. He didn't take them punk boys with him. I will return. That's what the game was about. And yeah. so consequently, the whole thing, we we get ours from the north, you know the 38th parallel? Mm-hmm. Why is that important? The DMT? That's where the, the 38th parallel split the tungsten mines in half. Huh? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, the north is half the south. That's why they say they got half a million people in the DMT zone. That's why they say the war had never ended. You know that. They just declared the truth. Hmm? Of course. I mean, but what war really ever ends? I mean, it's always a war for resources, right? They fight wars to control people's resources. Well, let me, let me, let me take you back to here. Mm-hmm. If you was a German, hmm? okay. and I was an American. No, I take it. If you was a German, and I was a, an Italian, right? Okay. You got one kind of uniform, and I got another, right? Right. All you got to do is take the damn uniforms off. I wouldn't know who to shoot, and you wouldn't. Huh? <laughs> yes. And then say some stuff about, uh, uh, I'll tell you, there'd be wars and rumors of wars. I, I, I asked my mother, why do people go to war? God knew there's going to be wars and rumors of war. I said, what about all these hungry? God said, the, the, the hungry will always be, oh, come on, Mom, come on, come on. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so we go back again. Now you got these people still looking. The, the next war... World War Three will destroy this planet. Only the real God, not the church, that put this universe together will be able to destroy it. And when that happens, it don't need no help from some punk thugs disrespectful for God and everything in their sight. Huh? Let me show you something. Let me, let me show you something. Mm-hmm. Daylight saving time hmm? okay. has a hell of an effect 
on everything on this planet. That's why places like Indiana, they don't have it. Let me, let me tell you. Once you tell me that 12 o'clock is really 11 o'clock, you sit it back. And then right. later when I adjust to it, then you sit it forward. Uh, let me tell you. If 12 o'clock noon, I'm going to say this to you, if 12 o'clock noon lasts one ten trillion of a second longer, everything on this planet would burn up. Hmm? Mm. Now, you hear what I just said? Yes, sir. We'll burn up. Hmm? We'll burn up. So when you stop and think about every time you gain a pound, hmm? mm-hmm. a pound, mm-hmm. a weight, your body manufactures seven miles of blood vessels. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Harvard don't know this. Seven miles of blood vessels your body creates. So when you see these huge obese people, when they lose that weight and all that flabbers fun and nothing, and they go get operations, and you don't need this. All you have to do is drink water. Why? The universe made that. If you gain 10 pounds, you got 70 pounds, 70 miles of blood vessels running through your body, and, and we don't know what this body's about, huh? Mm. You can't go to the First National Bank because you're black or because you're woman. You don't get that. No, no. So when you lose it, what do you do? You you, you start drinking water. Them blood vessels was made for blood. So when blood ain't coming, the universe will shrink them. Huh? Shrink them. And so when you stop and think about this dog going to destroy Let me tell you something. Do you have any children? No, sir. You got any brothers or sisters with children? Yes, sir. Oh, no, not, no, no. They don't have any. All right, well, let me tell you why I said that. Yes, sir. Take all the major armies, not just two of them. Take every army on this planet. And when that woman's nine-month pregnancy is up, they cannot go to that hospital or to her house and open her legs and keep that baby in her. You better not drop it. Let me tell you, there's a universal God that said, when my nine months pregnancy up, I'm going to drop that baby if it means death to the mother and the child. Huh? Yeah. This is this is who we're dealing with. Hmm? Right now, you have blood vessels. A hundred thousand miles of blood vessels is in your body. Seventy-five trillion cells is in your body, and they're able to reduce us down. Believe we insignificant, nothing. And right now, with a hundred thousand miles of blood vessels in your body, where you are right now, right. and your blood makes a complete cycle every thirty seconds, which means you sitting in there, your blood is traveling two hundred thousand miles a minute. Uh, and they got you believing a jet plane is fast, huh? Mm. He, you hear what we talk just me and you? We don't have to go to Harvard, Yale, none of that stuff. Yeah, that's, 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 oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I want to switch up a little bit because I got a lot of people that want to get in on this conversation. Okay. Also, I want to ask you a couple questions. Oh, wait, let me just do this. Yes, do sir. Mm-hmm. A cop. Egyptians. Created okay. that. It's called conscience on patrol. Mm. Okay? Conscience. The color of your conscience is blue. Right. That's why they call the men in blue. Mm. You were never meant to carry a gun. The conscience. If me and you going down the street to rob some place and we see a cop, we go the other way, right? Yes, sir. That's the conscience. The British changed it to constable on patrol. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens once I put a gun now you know enough about lead poisoning to know that uh, if you have a family and you have lead paint on the walls different designs in it or wallpaper right? right right now you can be sued 
if you fail certain things with lead, mercury, huh? Mm. Do you know if you have mercury fillings and you got to get taken out? There's a, there's a, a law, a federal law, that the dentist got to notify, notify the government. The government sends a special box by there for that dentist to put that mercury in when it takes it out of your mouth mm. and ship it back to them. And yet, for years, it was in our teeth and all this kind of thing. Thermometers. When I was in school, we'd check the thermometer, see what the temperature is. You better not have a thermometer in school. I say that to say this here. Mm-hmm. With lead, give you lead poison. What do you think happens to cops that wear lead bullets around their belly mm. eight to ten hours a day? Or is lead poison suspended? Now, let's look at American cops. More cops in America die from suicide than killed in the line of duty. Is that, is that weird? Mm. 98% of cops that get shot get shot with their own gun. Mm. Okay? The number one stu- suicide occupation is cops. Their second wives is prostitutes. Huh? Mm-hmm. Now, I say this to say, why wouldn't they be crazy? You know, I didn't, they're mad. And, and as, as a little boy, I used to hear him talk about gunslingers. You ever heard that word, gunslingers? Yes, sir. That's because they, they wore the hoses that slung down off your body. That's how they had to be dead eye shots because they couldn't carry extra bullets on their body. Mm-hmm. And so I'm saying, you think, Dick Gray, we know this, and, and the people who are responsible for police don't know this. They don't care. And so again, I say, you know, as we look to see where this thing is moving, it shows like this here. I mean, I say stuff. If my mama was laughing, she called police. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And and again, well, we open up. If you haven't seen the movie Forty Two, I'm glad man. you just read my mind. You just you just read everything in my mind. I saw that on Friday. Yes, sir. Have you seen See, it? It meant double to me because mm-hmm. I was born in 1932. Yes, sir. As few people know why there was so much hatred in baseball towards mm-hmm. black. Simple. What they call that America's game? Mm-hmm. You know why? Why? When the Jews came over here, the immigrants, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't they have Jewish ghettos for them in New York? Mm-hmm. Italians came over. Italian ghettos, right? Right. The Irish came over, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, why? Because they weren't integrated into American society, huh? Mm-hmm. And so when they went to the ball game, there were no certain sections for Jews and Italians and this <laughs> way. Oh, that's why it was called America's Game. That's the only place they could be free to sit wherever they wanted. Hmm? Right. We don't want those Negroes in here. And you know what's so ignorant about America? You heard them how many times they call him nigger, refer to him a nigger. But me and you ain't supposed to say it. And black folks accept that. Are y'all out your mind? Huh? Are you out your mind? As long as you white. Big old Hollywood can say it any time. I'll get people coming. Don't think you can't use it, but don't call me. You know, don't call me. Can you imagine one day if they told the, the Jews you can't say swap stickers? You have to call it the S word. Right. You can't say concentration camp. You can't call it the C word. Hmm? Mm-hmm. How can you be so embarrassed about what somebody else called you? We you know. accepted it. You well, accepted brother. it. Huh? Brother, 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 have you seen yes. the movie Forty Two yet? Have you seen that movie? Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know what I like about it was interest because you know we talked about Django too on this show. But what was interesting the scene with Jackie Robinson was a, a play that Dodgers Stadium at this field and the Ben Chapman, the manager from the Philadelphia Phillies. The guy played that character was very interesting. I mean, he was calling him nigger and everything. And I mean, that movie uh, when I saw it was very interesting because I think he did a good job of incorporating some aspects of Red Tails. I also was told a little bit of truth. I had a chance to talk to some uh, Negro League baseball players a couple weeks ago, 
And they said they really enjoyed the movie because it really told the story about how white folks view black people. Like, you know, yep. they used the word yeah. nigga a lot of times. It made a lot of people in the, in the audience uncomfortable. Yeah, well, well black well, and white. Here's what my grandson said. He's seven years old. And uh, he said, then I'll get back to what you said. Seven years old. Mm-hmm. New Mexico. Ain't no Negro there. So he's in school. Mm-hmm. And he should tell him the first week what we're going to do is uh, all this week we just want the class to come in and tell stories about good things that happened to you or your family or somebody you know. Right. And so they did that the first week. And the second week, she said, I want you to tell some sad stories, something that happened that you know happened, somebody told you this or that or you read it. And so they did. So it comes his turn. He gets up and says, I would like to talk about slavery, lynching, and castration mm. and how it affected black people. He said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. This, uh, y'all too young. I know how you feel, you know, being a black person in your family. He said, that ain't got nothing to do with it. And he said this very respectful. He said, if I was a Jewish person, you'd let me talk about the Holocaust. Mm. But I say to you now, there's somebody that's above you in authority. Go get them and bring them in here because this class is not going to move another further. Don't look at me. It's been seven years old. I'm a human being. Mm. And I'm going to report some tragedy, just like you are. Or you get somebody else that can tell me why I can. So they go get the assistant principal. He come in, tells him, no, 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 excuse me. All this stuff they tell us, but we got to respect y'all. We got, no, 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 no. Let me tell you something, brother. What are you saying to the principal? I'm going to walk out of here. Now can you stop me? Mm. Unless you call the police. You know your school would be in trouble letting a seven-year-old child leave here and walk down that highway by itself. Hmm? Mm. Wow. My mother is finishing up a, a book for some research at Columbia University. But that's why I don't want to interrupt her, but I will. But y'all going to answer. And then he said this. The reason Jewish people could stand here and talk about the Holocaust is you all don't feel guilty for that. Mm. Me to stand here, America's guilty. That's what it's about. Okay? This is where these young sisters are coming from now. Oh, wow. So I, I say that to say, last night, after seeing it two times, mm-hmm. seeing Django 40 times, mm-hmm. why? Because Jackie Robinson came through, and we see one black after another coaching, hmm? managing, huh? We see this. We've never seen a black person in a movie riding a horse, tying up his horse and walking into a bar. That was new for us. Hmm? We never see a guy reach and get his gun and blow somebody away for calling him a nigga. That's new. Hmm? What, about, what about what people said about Herb Jeffries when he did uh, Singing About the Rule, I believe? Man, let me tell you. Was, <laughs> let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. Herb Jeffries and them, they had chump change. Okay. Herb Jeffries and them ran. The guy was coming in, ran, and jumped over the horse. They couldn't take that out because they didn't have that kind of budget. Hmm? Uh-huh. You know, I mean, we went there to see a comedy, man. Mm. Herb Jeffries, I know you ain't old enough. Have you ever seen any of Herb Jeffries? I saw a little bit of stuff. I haven't seen too many of them. You see a white person get shot? No, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. Point well taken, point well taken. See, we don't, we don't know this here. Mm-hmm. Cowboy. Huh? Mm-hmm. The rodeo. We invented that. Why you think they call it Cowboy. Go over there and get that cow, boy. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. 
And the brother would go over there, jump on that cow, and ride him back, man. And be doing all kind of things, huh? Mm-hmm. That's where that came from. Us, cow, boy. Okay? And so consequently what happened with when Jackie Robinson came through, man, at that time, most Negroes couldn't even go to the ballpark. That's where the Negro League, when the ball team was out of town, traveling, that's when the Negro League played in the park. And so black folks would fill it up. And let me tell you the biggest shock I ever had. Huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't know that's more than them top stars. Made more in one year than Ted Williams in the top. Idolized around the world, white boys. Did. Why? Because they were that good, and Negroes would come out and see. They would come out and see. Ted Williams couldn't touch the salary hmm? that Sash Moore was making. And this man, one of the great stories in the world. A great I'm story. I'm going to this, though. I thought it was interesting. The movie touched upon something that I think people don't really realize that, you know, from a historical perspective, uh, that the Negro Leagues at that point when Jackie Robinson integrated the major leagues were making more money than the major leagues were. I'm telling and you now. Mm-hmm. That's why I was making it. Huh? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Negroes back in them days was buying Cadillacs. Why? <laughs> because they wouldn't let me go to Vegas. I couldn't gamble my money away. They wouldn't let me go to Miami in the wintertime. So right. all this money I just made, I was able to keep access. It was enough to get me a Cadillac every day. Mm-hmm. And so consequently, I want you to hear this. Mm-hmm. Dave Ruth was a Negro. Okay? I could feel like a Negro. I yeah. <laughs> Ty Cobb. Oh, Ty Cobb used to dog him, man. Coon. Mm-hmm. Coon. Gorilla. <laughs> and every, if you look up, somebody went and looked up his average. Uh, first, baseball. If you're playing baseball, and you you bite you biting three hundred ten years, boy, you're a star, right? Right. You batting three hundred. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know what that means when you batting three hundred? What is seven hundred of the balls you didn't even see? <laughs> <laughs> you right. believe that? If mm-hmm. you batting, if you you batting three hundred, seven hundred balls went by you. You didn't even see them. Mm. Okay. Now watch this now. So now, Ty Cobb. So somebody went and did the research and found out that when Cobb Cobb, when the New York Yankees was playing the Detroit Tigers, Dave Ruth's stuff would soar. Why? The insults he turned them in to a power play. I'll show you, huh? Mm-hmm. Ah, okay? Now, watch this. When Dave Ruth, now all the, the white players, they would come. Like the white boy said, my folks knew I was playing with the Negro. Hmm? Mm-hmm. The biggest games we had in St. Louis is when the white boy, and the other one made them so good, the Negro League played 12 months a year. The white boys didn't, so they are drinking and having parties three months, and they got to come back. <laughs> so they call up again. Negroes, they played right around the clock. And what happened is when... Uh, when they moved, hit that ball and became the greatest home run king mm-hmm. in the world, right? Okay. Now, remember, after they season's over, they can't wait to get to play in the Negro League so they can look at it and watch them turns and look at them flips. Right. <laughs> Cats running down the field and get to third base and do a, a no-hand flip and then hit the ground and come on in and score. Mm. And now, watch this. So, they moved. Is playing the Kansas City Monarchs. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the place is packed. Why? Because I know baseball. I love baseball. I'm talking about black folks, right? Right. So I'm coming to see this man who's the greatest thing in the history of baseball. The, state, the, the place was packed. So it's that's your page. Mm. In 
the history of Negroes playing, playing white folks on the off season. Mm. Babe Ruth had never in the history got on base when such a face was pitching. You hear me? Right. Oh, man, the black folks, oh, they just waiting to see <laughs> such a face. Shut him down. Mm. Mm. The first pitch, Babe Ruth popped it out the park. Mm. Mm. I want you to hear this. Take this statement, give it to the children that you know right. about the humanities. When when Babel popped that ball out the field, when he's rounding third, right? That's your page over there to meet him, put his foot on the, the base, and they trash talked. About 30 minutes, man. You hear me? <laughs> you wow. hear me? Yes, sir. 30 minutes, and here's what he told him. He said, that's the first and the last time you'll ever hit me. <laughs> Wait a minute, listen to this. Uh-huh. He said, and the only reason I let you do that, I wanted my Negro people to see what the world's talking about. Hmm? Mm-hmm. They can see me strike you out any time. All over the world, the talk is they move. I wanted them to seek that. Can you imagine? Mm-hmm. Not up there with the ego. Yeah, you cracker. Let me show you. No, he didn't do that. Right. For the love of my people, I want them to see what the world is talking about. Mm. But is that? Did you hear me? Yes, sir. What? You know, my humanity, huh? Yeah, I read somewhere that Babe Ruth told a reporter. A reporter asked Babe Ruth one time, well, who was the greatest baseball player? He asked him, was it white or, you talking about, you know, he said the greatest of all time. He said it was uh, Henry Pop Lloyd that was the mm-hmm. greatest be- baseball player ever saw a black man. Yep. Yeah, so, I mean, like, you know, he, he, he says the truth. It's kind of like a Larry Bird thing where he said, you know, the basketball is a black man game. It's how you learn how to play basketball playing against a black man in Indiana. But I want to move on because I knew it was like, you know, there's so much information you have. Mm-hmm. I got people that have been patiently waiting. I got a special guest I want to get in. And, that, you know, she's a big fan of yours. And she's coming out of uh, Texas, actually. The beautiful sister. Uh, she saw you speak several times before. Uh, sister, sure, are you there? Yes, I am here. Uh, thank you. you. Special. It's her birthday weekend too, brother, uh, brother Gregory. Uh, her birthday was on the Friday, but she, you know, this is my gift to her. Make sure that she could talk to you and well, ask some questions. Lovely. Thank you, and sister, for your birthday. Always celebrate your birthday. Always celebrate your birthday the day before your birthday. The day It's universal. My birthday is October the 12th, always on the 11th. Mm. And let me tell you why. For nine months, you and your mother's womb, and the only thing you get to eat is drinking her urine. And when she don't drink enough water, you kick her. We call it morning sickness. The universe said you better drink some water so she can eat. Now, 24 hours before you arrive, all of those connected universes that's hooked to you and her, all of them cease. They break down. They stop. There's no not hooking to you a day before, and now you start floating down the fallopian tube. Floating down the fallopio tube, and that's the party. And if you notice, if you have children, and you come out, you're tired. You sleep all day. Well, now let's look. Christmas is the birthday of Jesus Christ. Ain't it called Christmas Eve party? Hmm? The day before? Hmm? Mm. New Year's is the birthday of the new year. Ain't it called New Year's Eve party? And let me tell you something. Mm. In most areas in America, on Christmas Eve, you go out drinking. You can call a cab, and they have to take you home for free, or they can go to jail. New Year's Eve. As an entertainer, the biggest action is New Year's Eve. They sell more champagne. and, 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 and Now, New Year's Eve. 
You can call with cab. They got to take you home for free, or they can be put in jail. They mm. don't have to do that on Christmas Day or the New Year Day, huh? But as long as I can keep you from knowing the real stuff, you don't know. And so, again, the party, everything in your body, every year when it comes back to that, every cell go crazy because it remembers the day when you were set free. So I just wanted to, to, to drop that on you. And, uh, and happy birthday to you. And never, ever have a cake with a candle that you blow out. Matter of fact, when you see, well, since you're not that old, we used to go to the movie and all these shows, them old big mansion movies, and mm-hmm. and the rich folks, they had the pinches, you know, you know, the little pinches, look like little bells. Mm-hmm. But then you put it up and, and, and pinch the out. It's a violation to blow a candle out. And it's a violation to make a wish. Wish is, a, is, is, is negative. Blow it at Wish I get me a bicycle. That means you don't have no face. Wishing, wishing. Do you go to do a big show and wish you get paid? Do you have a contract? <laughs> no. What you do? You look at that, okay? And you just say bicycle. <laughs> you, know, mm. you command that. Yeah. Bicycle. Don't wish for nothing. And then your birthday is complete. So just thank you and and you have. Matter of fact, I hope you have so many birthdays. You get so old, there'd be so many candles on the cake that everybody at the party will pass out from the heat. (laughs) (laughs) Let me tell you what. what, Thank you so much. And I love you. I love you. Thank you, dear lady. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And and let me tell you, since the birthday's coming up, the three causes of death in America is not cancer, you could diabetes, none of that. Stroke, none of that. Heart, none of that. The number one cause of death is sleep deprivation. Okay? Mm-hmm. Sleep deprivation. And if you get a headache, anytime you get a headache, I'm talking to all of y'all now, and you was never hitting your head, it's not coming from your head. It's sending a message to the brain to let you know something's malfunctioning. The number one cause. The number two cause of death is dehydration. Dehydration. The number three cause of death, lack of physical fitness. Lack of physical fitness. Trillions of dollars of equipment is being sold for people to visit. No, no. All you got to do is walk. Running is a violation of God. Nobody runs but a fool. Or they don't know. They're not supposed to. And when you're supposed to run the universe ticket, it's called fight or flight. Let me kind of give you an example. Okay. Let's say you haven't done no exercise in 10 years, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And you run from the studio 10 miles to your house, you know. Do you know how sore your muscles are going to be tonight and tomorrow? Yes. (laughs) Somebody call you and say your house is on fire and your mother's trapped in there. You leave there and run all the way there, and tonight you won't have one pain in your body because it's called fight or flight. The universe massages it, whole body, every cell. And then you can take off. And then tonight, tomorrow, you will not. Anytime you do that, Without fight or fight. That's why black folk is so messed up. It's because you're not meant to stay in a fight or fight. Fight or fight. See, I thought fight meant put up your fist. Mm-hmm. Fight or flight meant running. I thought, no. Fight means you're in a building, there's an explosion, and you see that old 80 year old woman over there, you take off and get her to take her out. That's called fight. Flight is you take off and, and run, okay? And so consequently, if I'm suspicious of a white racist system, if I see a cop car in a flight, then fight or flight kicks in. It wasn't meant to kick in. One day somebody's going to find out how you erase all of that 
the Lord that God gave you. All the chemicals. The fire, this is an unfair question to ask, but what's the fastest animal in the jungle? Uh, well, I would say the cheetah, right? Is that the fastest animal? Cheetah. Yeah, that's good. That's good, okay. the cheetah. Mm-hmm. Do you know that not a human being that was born on this planet that, that, that can't outrun the cheetah? Now, that sounds like I lost my mind, right? Oh, yeah. yeah well, you said, yeah. Okay. You know why? Why? When you take off with fight or flight, like mm-hmm. the first two minutes you run in so fast, how do you think a mother can walk out the house? She jacked up the car to change her tire, right? Mm-hmm. And the phone rang, and she went in the house. She came back. The baby hit them still. The wood is on, and the car. How do you think she can walk up and lift that car off that child? That's mm-hmm. fight or flight, okay? Mm-hmm. That's the universe gave you that energy. So let's go back now. When the body was in proper condition, when you had enough water, breathing right, and all of that. Now, you know, if you want to commit suicide, you put your car in the garage, get in the car, and turn it on. Mm-hmm. And that carbon monoxide, right? Right. Will kill you, right? Yes, sir. When you go and get a soda pop or a carbon drink, are you aware of that carbon monoxide? Mm. <laughs> huh? Do you realize one soda pop? will make your bloodstream 10,000 times more acid than God meant for it to be. And in order to balance that out, you'd have to immediately drink 15 glasses of water. Hmm? Mm. Okay? Now, let me get back to you, Cheetah. So when I hear it, do I hear it. Hmm? Mm-hmm. I'm gone. Here's why I can outrun it. I'm fast enough to outrun I looked at Jesse Owens, sad story, you know, he, with all his greatness. He couldn't, you know, go and speak on what he just did in Germany because the segregation, right? Right. So he was racing horses. So we go out to, to the park, and you hear him, ready, aim, pow. The horse leaps up in the air, right? Mm-hmm. All he was racing at 50 yards. By the time the horse comes out, Jesse's there. <laughs> but, but Jesse, he's crawling that line. That horse catching up with him. Now, mm. a cheetah, when you see it, you take off. The difference between you and the cheetah, all the chemicals that's coming out your body, from fear and all of that, coming through your perspiration. Animals have fur and hair all over their body. They can't sweat. Hmm? Mm. <laughs> all you got to do is whoop him for after two minutes. That thing falls to you. So when you think about, you know, the universe, what it gave us, your hair, you know how you wear a bulletproof vest, right? Mm. The bulletproof vest don't keep you from getting shot. It slows up the bullet, right? Right. With the metal and stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Or it don't go through, right? Mm-hmm. Well, nappy hair, okay, when the universal God put it together, it knew that because of your melanin, if it came straight, sun in your hair, into you, you would die. Okay? Because of the melanin. So God gave you a bulletproof vest called nappy hair, twisted it, so it got to go through the corals before it goes in, and by the time it gets there, it's slowed up enough that it won't affect the body. We so busy want to look like white folks here who don't have the melanin that need that system. Mm. And we straighten it out, and that stuff go right through when it shouldn't. Go through that fast. The ray of the sun, huh? Yes, sir. That's what that's what the universe had. That's why we're so silly and don't even know it, because we have violated the universe. And then to hear black folks say, "Ooh, she got good hair." Are you telling me that there's a universal God that put the whole universe together? There's about two thousand universes together. You telling me? That God made good hair and bad hair. What kind of fool is you? Huh? Oh, Brother Greg, I want, 
Yeah. yeah. I want to, uh, you know, we're getting a long time. There's so much information that you have. I got people on the line that want to talk to you. Please do, you. yes, um, yes. And but I want to ask you this question. I think it's very fascinating. I think it's an important time because, you know, we're coming up on the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. Mm-hmm. And I'm in Memphis. We got to celebrating or uh, commemorating what happened to Dr. King here 45 years ago. Yeah. had a chance to meet MLK, MLK the third. But I want to ask you because I had a guest on my show several weeks ago. He made some interesting uh, comments about uh, people like James Baldwin and Byron Rustin. These are guys from the movement, of course. And he was saying that a lot of them were, they were race traders. Like Byron Rustin, he was really a race trader. He was more interested in the quote unquote homosexual agenda, and that he basically uh, controlled King. He manipulated King into well, doing certain things. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, maybe maybe he knew. You know, maybe he was gay too. And knew yeah, I played Powell Jr. You know, we, you know, I played Powell Jr. I guess he uh, warned King to not interrupt the uh, Democratic convention in 1960 because he was said he told him that he would go to the press and tell him that him and uh, King and Bayer Rustin was having an affair. But they didn't say that about me. They didn't say that about you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You see, gossip mm-hmm. is when I say something that I wouldn't say in your face. I wonder, would he go to King's face and say that? And that don't mean it ain't true. Right. But I'm saying, punch up, not today, punch up the German homosexual that hooked up with George Washington, and Mm. because of him, George Washington won the war. Two Mm. things about that, and I'll get back to you. George Washington understood Negroes. Why? He had slaves, right? Right. They'd come from Africa, right? Mm-hmm. So he noticed the slaves, when they would get smallpox and stuff, he noticed the slaves would take a knife and go up to the tip of your shoulder up top mm. and, and cut it and then take the blood and put it on the knife and then come and cut your child's shoulder. Vaccination. That's, okay? That's why the slaves weren't dying. And George Washington, when they couldn't even recruit, losing 2,000 soldiers a week, people were scared. George Washington said, here's what the slaves did, and they did that. In one week, it was down to 10. People started flocking back into the army, okay? One man had watched black folks do this little thing, and his mother and father did it to him, his little boy. Mm. Now, watch this. One of the greatest military geniuses, one of the German, is a pedophile. Mm-hmm. He got caught, and they brought him before trial. He was so famous and he was kicked out the army, the military. And that's all he wanted to do. And he went around like wildfire to the military high up. He couldn't get a job. Mm. He went to Russia. And he said, no. Said, but uh, if I was you, I'd go to France. Because one of George Washington's best friends, Thomas Jefferson. Right. He's in there. He's an ambassador for the U.S. And just see if he can get you in touch with George Washington. So he went there and uh, said, everywhere I go because of my conviction. Well, I am. I can't find work. He said, well, I'll give you a letter. Go to America. An introduction to George Washington. Thank you. I showed how the universal God works. He gets into Maine. No, Portland. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. No, it was Maine. And he works his way to Boston, and he meets this guy who he's supposed to see with this letter. So, and he shows him his military manual. The guy copied it word for word in English 
and made a group of books. Now, unknown to anybody then, George Washington could not read German. <laughs> so if he'd have went there, it wouldn't have meant nothing. So here's a guy that he sent him to deliver him to George Washington. He spoke German fluently, so he interpreted he goes uh, to meet Washington, gives him the book, and it's in English. George Washington's so impressed. This evening, take him to the head of the front line and tell who was ever there, he represents me. No questions asked, no nothing. So he gets there. Uh, you know the bayonet that we use? Mm-hmm. That was a knife. That was an eating utensil, and they little, made a little thing on the gun because soldiers so dumb they lose they 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 knife. How they gonna eat? <laughs> Remember that little <laughs> okay. part in it? They just cut the meat and ate with their hands. Mm-hmm. So he gets there and he says, "Okay, as of this evening, these orders will take place in tomorrow. We will have latrines." Back then, there was nothing. You just went to the side of the road, and then right down the street was the mess hall. He said, nobody will go and relieve themselves without going into the latrines we'll have built and put up a morning. Nobody will go into the mess hall without washing their hands. Okay? Mm. And he looked at this knife and turn it into a bayonet. And America had the greatest army ever lived because you can kill more people with a bayonet than you can shoot. Because the gun, the bullet travels fast, but the mechanism don't. And he's the one invented that. And he's the one, and the story they tell is the, the army was waiting on the British, but they had a harbor. They had their guns, but the bullets hadn't showed up. And because he had taught them how to use that knife on the tip of that knife, he, what, they wiped out 2,000 British troops that night. Which oh, wow. Huh? You know, well, I was thinking about what you were saying um, about what the, this uh, German uh, military genius. I also want to get your take there. Wait a minute. Now, remember now. Okay. Y'all can pull that up. He was homosexual. Yes, sir. I'm not down there at all. Yes, no, 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 I'm not saying that. Mm-hmm. I'm saying he's a pedophile. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so they've always been in the army. They wasn't waiting for, for the president to say, <laughs> we're going to wipe out don't that, don't tell. <laughs> right, exactly. When I was that's a little boy, well taken. when I was a little boy, everybody in my church, okay, they knew who the gay preachers was, mm-hmm. gay deacons was, huh? They know they they knew who the the pedophile. We didn't know. We knew I was five years old. I hear the old folks tell you know Reverend Gully. He's kind of right. You know, the music director's kind of. You know, they black folks know gay entertainers. You have to tell us they know, huh? Nobody was was heating up on beating up. The safest place a gay person could be was in a Negro community because we wasn't hating up on us, huh? Mm. We thought they was brilliant. We thought they was always clean, nice, and, and educated. Of course, now, we didn't know women could be gay, huh? Mm. We didn't know football players could be gay, huh? Mm-hmm. We didn't know that athletes could be gay. But I'm saying, when we found out you was gay, we knew so now why is all this rumbling with the black church? Because back in them days, it was a segregated, rigid country, and black folks didn't know the way white folks felt about gays. We know now, so we felt we had to be like them. Hmm? Mama, know, mama know the boy's gay. She know that. And so consequently, I'm, I'm saying, as we look at the things, the gays in the military, we heard all the stories about the whack. Military. Oh, we didn't know nothing about no lesbians. Hmm? Right. Mm-hmm. And so consequently, as we look now and see this whole thing changing, then everybody picks a, 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 a different race. Well, God said uh, 
relationship between a man and a woman. Oh, well, wait a minute now. Am I right or did I get the wrong research? 78% of all married people in America end up in divorce. Oh, what what you say? Yeah. Wait a minute. Well, you're not supposed to have sex only to reproduce. Oh, well, okay. It's, uh, masturbation? Did that fall in there? You can't create another job doing that, huh? Oh. So, so what are we talking about? We, we twist stuff. You can't talk for God like the most biggest, wealthiest bank in America is the Chase Manhattan. I can't speak for that bank. I'm two inches away from welfare, huh? <laughs> All right. But we think we can. You got people out here now who say, I don't believe in God. Boy, they could, like, God need you. I ain't talking about the church. God need you to represent God. Are you crazy? What he about? Put, gee, he put everything here on the planet, in the universe, and you think that God? That's like me going to Howard, Harvard, Morehouse, going to the chemistry department to speak. But in books, the greatest, no, 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 no. And then once we unwind that, we will see that. And so to go back to the civil rights movement. Mm-hmm. There's gays in every movement. They didn't just get here. They didn't just get here. Right. They've been here. Huh? They've been here. Just because you just found out about it. I'm talking about the listener. Don't mean it wasn't real. So they go in, and a, a, a woman called me out in Europe last week. She called me a news lady from Chicago. I said, girl, you lived in Chicago for 25 years. I just want to, I'm, I'm doing this store. I got a dinner. I just want to know, what do you think about uh, all the the, the, the the killing in Chicago that you've been reading about? I said, oh, I don't remember what you were killing. Killing? She said, girl, I'm talking about, you know, a little young girl that was, you're not going to, oh, oh, I thought you were talking about the mafia. I thought you were talking about the mafia. Mm-hmm. You were talking about the St. Valentine's Day massacre where Al Capone had 14 people killed in a garage while he was down in Florida so they couldn't blame it on. Are y'all crazy? And then you made heroes out of them. The Godfather. God. God. I didn't hear no Christians get mad. Godfather. Huh? Heroes out of them. You can walk down the street now and see these little uh, new places look like speakeasies, huh? And they got Al Capone on a big old picture out there with a machine gun. They all crazy. What is this about? And so this is this whole game, this this whole game. And then people want to be shocked when the truth starts coming out, huh? Mm-hmm. Marines, Marines, what are they call leather what? A leather neck. Right. Have you ever seen any leather around their uniform? No, I, I recall. Well, who do you associate with leather? But homosexuals, right? Mm. So why would they call leather nakes when they have no leather around the nake of their uniform? Y'all crazy? Hmm? Oh, uh, so I want to just move on to the get the calls in because a lot of people are clamoring. I got a, a special caller coming in uh, from Cleveland. I believe his brother will ask you a question directly. Okay, brother Booker, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. Hey, uh, you know, yeah, you know, you're with the, uh, Big Gregory. You're gonna ask him a question. God bless I you, my brother. Say, love to you um, and the family. Thank you, brother. Um, it's such an honor to meet you. Um, I don't, I don't even know how to start, but my father, um, my mother told me that you knew my father. Um, he was killed in '68. His name was Ted Brown, the folk singer. Oh yes, and, uh, yes, my God, from Cleveland. Yes, 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 Worked yes. work all over the country in coffee houses. Yes, yes. And, um, 99% of his audience was white folks. Right, 99% of his audience was white folks. They'd come sit at his feet, man. Yes, yes. They would come to, well, let me just first say, thank you for sharing his name. Thank you. And I loved him. And one of the joys of coming to play in, play in Cleveland well, I know I'd get to see him if he was in town. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you what know, um, it, it's it's you know he passed when I was five and my other brothers were we were all children. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
my mother, you know, um, she passed on the other side about five years ago, but she often mm-hmm. told me that uh, you and he had a relationship and when, when you would come to town. Yeah, and, yes, yes. Oh, I didn't hear you. I just said, yes, yes, I'm just thinking, man, you hey, got me. And, 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 uh, and I'm just nowhere. Oh, yeah, and I, for the longest period of time, I wanted to discuss some things with you uh, off the air about uh, the way he was killed and to share the story because there's some things that I've heard because I'm 50 now over the years. And, um, you know, with your knowledge and uh, your researchers, just to kind of match notes with things. I mean, now is not the arena for that, but, you know. No, here's um, what you do. Here's what you do. The number you call Talk to my brother. Get back to him, and he'll give you a number where he can reach me. Yeah, and he'll give yeah. it to you, and you reach me, and just leave word. And anywhere yeah. in the world I am, I'll get right back yeah. to you. All right. And you know, Again, I, and, and, just, and let I, me just I, say this. Let me say this about your dad, man. One of the nicest, kindest human beings yeah. on the planet was That's your right. father. Yes, was your father. And I hope you you have access to his music, the stuff he wrote. Yes, yes, I do. Listen um, to it, man. Listen to it. Yes, my my, I have a son who's kind of picked that up. He's in, he plays blues, but it's just like he has the spirit of my father was playing. And but yes, um, um, I I want to thank the brother for even you know we've been emailing each other and he responded. And you've been on other shows, and I couldn't catch you. And but uh, I mean, it's just a, it's it, it's an honor to meet you because even over the years when uh, you wrote your book, Nigger, I, no, 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 yeah. you didn't write that book. That wasn't you didn't uh, write that book. But you yeah. you wrote you wrote the book about uh, the different experiences you had when you were in comedy, when when uh, they said nigger. Whatever you do to that chicken, we're going to do to you. And you opened up the butt of the chicken and kissed the chicken and licked the chicken. And they walked in. Yeah, y'all, come on here, y'all. Come on here, y'all. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a pleasure talking to you. Let yes, me just sir. say this here. As you investigate, don't let no meanness come in. Okay? Yes, sir. Grief. Yes, sir. You know, more people die from lung cancer, from grief and smoking cigarettes. You hear me? Yes. Grief, negative. Yes. Uh, You remember the the uh, the guy that played Superman and had an accident. uh, Yeah. Yeah. And do you remember his wife died eighteen months after he died from lung Mm -hmm. cancer? And everybody said she didn't smoke. It's grief. I knew Coretta real close. The last 12 years of her life, she never ate cooked food. You go around the world on comps, she'd take her food with her. She died from grief right. of what she had gone through and what she had seen with the FBI. And let me just say one other thing to you. The next time you see that picture on the balcony where King was shot. Yes. Remember? Yes. And those black folks pointing up. You know about that picture? Yes, sir. How'd they know it wasn't going to be another shot? You hear me? Did you hear me? Yes, sir. How did they know it wasn't a bunch of no good vicious clan that we're going to kill all of them on the belt? How did they know? And if you look down at the bottom, kings on the floor and nobody's around him. That's a stage <laughs> picture. Because King was shot from the ground. Oh. Knocked him up off his feet. That, and I say this to say, the stuff that people put out after, if it's true or not, you don't know when you're dealing in a society, in a system like this. huh? Like this. You don't know. Read. This has nothing to do with your father. Read. The Globe and the Inquiry, that's owned by the CIA, okay? Right, right. If you go back and and get the day that Michael Jackson was murdered, 
at 2 o'clock in the morning, not when they tell us. From a satellite. Oh, that can't be just some chumps that don't like it. Okay? From a laser. Okay? I'm telling you that to say this here. When you look at, at Michael and what you heard and what you see, they the all the time say, Michael ain't got no money. Michael didn't have ask. I mean, I don't have to ask that. Michael Neverland got more oil underneath it than Kuwait got. Okay? Michael, before he died and up until now, is a state owns 50% of, of, of Sony. So Michael owns 72% of Dolly Parts. Mm-hmm. He owns 60% of Whitney Houston, okay? He never answered that filth, okay? He didn't know. I mean, he came to me, me and him was real close. Mm. And I put him on a 30-day fast. Joe called me 25 days, he said, you have to come out here, Michael's dying, Michael's dying. So I went out, Michael, your dad think I'm coming out here to tell you to break the fast. I ain't telling you not to ask one. <laughs> then I said to Michael, he, we were talking, and Michael was so upset about them trials. And Michael told me, see, Dick, you think I'm a pedophile? No, man, you ain't no pedophile. Now, you're probably gay, but you ain't a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I'm saying that when you start looking at stuff, they know how to, how to twist it. Abraham Lincoln was gay. Okay? And the white folks ain't going to print it. Well, oh, actually, what about Obama? I mean, I heard rumors about him being gay, or people like three, like for example, three of his uh, three black members from his church, including a choir director, died under mysterious circumstances. Yeah, back in two thousand seven, and they say that Obama was one of them. The guy was one of his best friends, the choir director, and he was gay, and Obama is homosexual. Well, you know, I hear all kind of things. I'm out here. I hear all kind of things. Mm-hmm. You, know, you never heard that Hoover was gay until he got out. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. People, they don't want it out. They don't hear it. People, they don't want it out. You never heard Marlon Brando was gay, with you? Mm-hmm. Until it got out. Hmm? So I'm saying, out here, there's all kind of stuff out here that they say different things about different this and different that. And so a system that hates you, they do everything they can to destroy you. Hmm? Mm-hmm. You remember the the guy that wrote the last book on on Malcolm? Made that man memorable, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they killed him the day the book came out, huh? Mm-hmm. And he said, "Well, Malcolm uh, wasn't only gay; he had a gay lover. Well, you got the, the most powerful black mind on the planet. Mm-hmm. He didn't just say gay; his lover was gay. But they're not going to tell you that Alex Haley came out of naval intelligence." Okay? And he didn't write none of that stuff. Huh? He, ain't yeah. with, he didn't write math, not, but you you know about that, right? Yes, sir. You told me about it, and I researched it just based on what you told me. But I also want to ask you, too, about James Baldwin and his relationship with the guy who yeah, wrote James, James the confession of uh, Nat Turner. James, James Baldwin didn't fake everybody knew he was gay. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's his name? The the, 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 the the first name you mentioned? Uh, by a in, the, in the movement. By a Rustin, Bay yeah. Rustin. Yeah. I knew he was getting it in hot. What about James Bevel? How do you place him then? Because James Bevel, I mean, he slept with his children allegedly. That's what they told you. You know, you know, mm-hmm. you know where his trial was it's in like Lynchburg, what? Virginia. Okay, Lynchburg, Virginia. Okay, that's the home of the Labor Party. You know, what's his name? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, well, uh, are you talking about uh, not? Come on, the Labor Party. You said the Labor Party, right? Yeah, the, the, you know, the, 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 the one they call radical. The, the Tea Party? No, no, no. He said the legitimate, just the Labor Party, stand on the corner passing out the literature about Queen Elizabeth, sell dope and all that. Okay, oh, I got you. Okay, all right. You know who I'm talking about? Uh, I don't have, it ain't coming to my mind right now. Yeah, no, well, they, 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 uh, they, they, uh, 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 Army Intelligence, Defense Okay. Intelligence. Okay? Mm-hmm. They put all kind of stuff out on folks. Hmm? All kind of stuff out. Until you got good researchers, and then they, they trick the research. But I'm saying it don't make any difference. Mm. Huh? They, they, look, all 
all at once. Stuff come out. Well, you become famous. Who cares? Mm. Who cares? And so I'm saying all of it comes out. Devil, if devil did that, me and you did it. Huh? Mm. Why would devil have a trial in Lynchburg? That's the home, the labor part. I'm not talking about the, the, the union labor part, right? Uh-huh. This is a game. Okay? They just, they, they just offer, and the mob ran most of the unions. You hear nobody discussing that. Mm. Or, or are you aware that, you know, different parts of the Republican Party, are you aware that uh, the, the, uh, the gay wing of the the uh, Republican Party. It's called Law Cabin Republicans. Right, right. Who's the only president you ever read about in history lived in a law cabin? Uh, Lincoln. Okay, that's how, that's how they hint that Lincoln was gay. They got cold. Right. And if you've seen the movie, Lincoln, the first thing he said in the movie about his nappy hair. Uh-huh. Remember? Yeah. Uh-huh. Lived, with, lived in the bed, slept with his black butler. That's the last one you saw in the movie, was running and picking the gloves. Right. Okay. And when he died, he got the law changed that he could be buried in the Arlington Cemetery. And so, you know, and then they tell you that Lincoln was killed because of the Civil War. No, no, Lincoln was killed. You can punch this up. He was killed because of an executive order he signed. Executive order. One 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 zero, executive order, one 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 zero, in the year of eighteen sixty three, executive order to do away with the central bank, Pow! and they made it look like he was not the war. That was the same thing with Kennedy, like you said. Yeah, yeah, okay. order. yeah. An executive order, June the fourth, nineteen sixty three. Do away right. with the Federal Reserve. Pow! He was shot. Correct. It made it look like it was the civil rights stuff that, you know. Well, actually, this is it. Well, I want to get to, like, you know, because I want to get to the phone lines again as we close and wrap it down. But what, what what's the situation with Hugo Chavez? I mean, he said that he was poisoned. They gave him cancer. Mm-hmm. So that's true? I'm sure it is. But, I mean, I, when, when he went over there to Castro, Castro is us, man. The most secret Navy base in the world is Guantanamo, right? Right. Why would we have it on enemy territory? Hmm? Mm. I, was, I was kind of thinking about that the other day, actually. I said, well, it don't make any sense. Yeah. No, they, you know, that's the game they play. And that's how it goes. So did Castro said I'd take then? Huh? Did he said I'd take Guevara? Castro, did he betray Che? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Right, yeah. Killed him. And then made like, you know. In the way it was for years. Right. But, you know, if, if you look around, for instance, let me just show you. For instance, mm-hmm. the universal God, I'm not talking about the church. Right. I talk to jails all over the world, and the first thing when I go to death row, I say, have it ever dawned on y'all? Okay, Pilot, what you said, Brother Gregory? I say, have it ever dawned on you all here in death row? That no atheists have ever been in death row? Mm. <laughs> mm. What is it about people who don't believe in God don't kill folk? Mm. Mm. Think about that. Mm. Mm. And so when you stop and think about, you know, that that whole piece when you start looking at it and, and feeling it, and that's why we all have instincts to feel. And mm. we get locked into uh um, uh, Frank James and Jesse James. My, my, my mother's mother worked for them up in the Boot Hills of, mm. of uh, Missouri. Yes, sir. And when Jesse, you know, was killed, Frank took the money, escaped, and changed his name to Rockefeller. That's where the Rockefeller. Okay. Mm. That's hey. the Rockefeller. <laughs> now I'm sitting around growing up, man. Jesse and Frank's my hero, and then I find out. Wow, they fought with the South in the Civil War. See what misinformation would do for you. Right, right. <laughs> Howard University, one of the the number one 
economically sound university on the planet, named after a white boy, General Howard, that got famous for killing Indian babies. Huh? Oh, uh, mm-hmm. huh? okay. So this is a game, man. Eh? This is a game. And one day when we realize that none of us black folk live in a community. What's a community? Community is where you control your cops, you control your education, you control your bank and finance, you control everything. We live in a neighborhood, and neighborhood wasn't invented for us. What is a hood? Something you put over your head when you're trying to hide something. Hmm. Huh? Mm. And so in America, the American newspapers that I have, I talked to you since uh, uh, Pope Benedict had been indicted. Right. Mm-hmm. But, uh, uh, now it's, it's on, you can punch it up now. When the guys gave it to me, they hadn't released it yet. But he's been indicted by the World Court. Mm-hmm. They, they, and, and the new Pope Francis, mm-hmm. oh, and punch up the dirty war. With France at the dirty war in in uh, in, in South America, and everybody, everybody believed in the, oh we got the first first South American as Pope. Man, that man born in born in Italy. He's Italian. <laughs> 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 I know that, but the New York Times. But when you punch up dirty war, mm-hmm. that was in 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 in, in Brazil and Venezuela. That was all in thirty thousand people that was murdered because the, the jumpers said they was left wing. They was revolutionary. And they would kidnap you walking down the street. They'd take the women to the military base and let the soldiers rape them and keep raping them until they become pregnant. And after the babies was born, about two weeks after, they took those women with five other women or ten, put cement around their, their legs and put them in a plane and take them up and, and drop them off in the ocean. Hmm. Those bodies would never come up. What they did with the babies, they trafficked them, children's trafficking. Industry, okay. Now, when the human rights folks would come to, to the countries to, to, to check out rumors about the, the brutality that the, was doing, and they didn't find none. Why? Because Francis lived in a mansion. They would hide him in his place, and nobody would assume to look there. Okay, that's who this. Yeah, it's like a Nazi to me. But I want to get to the uh, phone lines about. I want this other person. Been patiently waiting from Little Rock, uh, brother Chris Davis. Are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here, brother Chris Davis. Hey, right, man. Hey, thanks for uh, calling in and listening to the show. You're on with the honorable brother Dick Gregory, guys. Name that, brother Chris. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, first, I'm 23 years old, and I've just been, you know, researching, and I stumbled on you, and I've like researched so much about you, and I'm inspired, and I'm glad of the things that you've done and the things that you're doing. And I hope to one day, you know, become a mighty activist like yourself. And um, there's a lot of things that I'm trying to do and I want to do that I would like to talk to, talk to you about. But um, I was wondering, is there any way that I could lie? You could become a mentor of mine or anything like that. I, just, you know, <laughs> I, do, I do 250 <laughs> days a year. <laughs> I just, just turned down the day for $75,000. I ain't got no time. No. My life, I was never around my children. And I told my wife and my children, liberation for black folks is not in my house. Mm. And if I was in the military, all these black folks would talk about what the movement. What about my family? I don't hear y'all saying that when you're going to war to kill for this punk. Mm. Huh? Going someplace to shoot somebody you ain't never met and ain't going to call you a nigger. But when it comes to your liberation, huh? No. Oh. No way. I would. I, that's why I put my books out there. I got books out there. But all kinds of stuff. Sells millions of copies. you find it there. I got all kinds of there's people out there. You ever come to hear me speak, tape it, put, do anything you want with it. I don't have no calls in my contract. Right. I well, just did in the phone book. You know why? Black folks made me. 99% of my audience is white. The black folk made me because when I was trying to be funny, I wasn't funny. I was trying to be. I was working in little black nightclubs. Mm-hmm. Little black nightclubs. And you black folks listen to me. Until I got so good, 
y'all pushed me all the way downtown where y'all couldn't afford to see me. So I got to <laughs> That's why you can find me. Never had a bodyguard. Well, a bodyguard don't make much sense anyway. If you're my bodyguard and you got a gun that shoots seven times, all they got to do is show up with eight people. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. But uh, we will, we will keep on doing our part to get the word out because this is how uh, Brother Chris, I believe, found out about you. He saw some of the videos we put out that you've been mm-hmm. doing with us, and we've been blessed to have you bless us to help bless other people. That's great, so, man. What, what a blessing. Yeah, so I'm going to keep on moving on. to hear the brother, to mm-hmm. just to listen to him and, and to hear him. There's a whole lot of things you're going to find that you was told was right. Mm-hmm. That's right. And once that opens up, go back to the story of Adam and Eve. Is, uh, God put one person on the planet. His name was Adam. Adam. I ain't talking about the church. We're talking about the universal God. There's Adam. And then Adam said to God, I am lonely. And when God didn't say, how can you be lonely? But they couldn't nobody here but you. Uh-oh. Hmm? We ain't talking about the Pope or the bishop. We talking about the universal God that don't belong to no church. Huh? No okay. church. I know I didn't put nobody here but one person. So what's this boy talking about? Lonely? Uh-oh, let me shut this down. Oh, you can go ahead through it. Then he gave him a woman. And women, can you believe ain't a woman on this planet, a human that didn't come through, uh, coming through your belly. But when it comes to this one, this one came first. What did I do to you all? I yes, put sir. me ahead of you. Now, that's solid now. So they had two sons, Cain and Abel, right? Mm-hmm. Now, you got four people, right? Mm-hmm. One boy killed the other one, right? Mm-hmm. Now, you got three people, right? Right. And one went out and he got him a wife. Oh, and they think the word MF, they think we created that? <laughs> Ain't nobody there but him and dad and his mama would be married. Hmm? Okay. okay. Well, I got some more people that won't get in. They just okay. waiting patiently. Um, I know this person. She's calling. I don't know if she want to talk, but she's just listening. And sister, I'm uh, Melissa. Are you there? You on the air, Melissa? Yes. You want to talk? You, sister. Huh? Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Gregory. Yes, you on the air? Oh, hi. Uh, Hello. I didn't want to say anything. I was just listening in. What not? Oh, this is my sister you met at, at Howard back in, yeah, in June. She was with me, Brother Gregory, when I met you in June at Howard last right. year. Yes. I'm going to keep it moving. Thank you for listening. Uh, I also want to get your, oh, I'm going to let the, the caller get in right quick, though. Air code 316, you on the air? You want to say anything to Brother Gregory? 316, Air code. Just this, listening. Error code 858, you on the air. Mr. Gregory, you want to say anything? Uh, hey, Ron, this is Kyle from uh, San Diego. Hey, uh, bro, how you doing, man? Brother good, Kyle. good. Uh, hey. Yeah, I was going to listen, but I just want to say, uh, Brother Gregory, that, you know, uh, you kind of changed my life when I first heard you a few years back. And I've been telling everyone to, you know, listen, you know, to this inspiration. People are like, they don't, I don't know. But, uh, but anyway, you changed my life, and. You said something about if you wake up and go to a job, you know, you don't know God. So that's why, you know, I'm never going to work. So I appreciate that. <laughs> the people that run the world ain't never had a job. <laughs> mm. That's right. Never had a job. You got more intelligence in your baby finger than Queen Elizabeth probably got now. In her <laughs> whole body. She ain't never had a job. Queen Elizabeth make $360 million every 24 hours just interest on her money. Mm. Every day. Interest, and then they got us believing. Oh, if I could just be a, a millionaire, let me let me tell you about that chump change. If you took a million dollars and switched it over to a million seconds and added them up, you'd have thirteen days. If you took a billion dollars and switched it over to seconds and added it up, you'd have thirty-two years. <laughs> Who wants to be a millionaire? Mm. A million seconds is 13 days. A billion seconds is 32 years. Okay. Mm. <laughs> well, we got another caller. I think going to come on the air. 
Eric Cole, 713, you on the air with Brother Dick Gregory? 713? They're just listening in. A lot of people listening in today. That's good. That's a great commentary on the chat room. Uh, Eric Cole, 661, you on the air with Brother Dick Gregory? Eric Cole, 661? Okay, I just, just listening. I want to ask you right quick. I know we talked about the last time we spoke, we were talking about the Little Wayne rapper and the Emmett Till controversy. You talking about that, you know, people should get together and boycott. And now I know you know about the Rick Ross, the rapper, who just lost his uh, contract deal with Reebok over some lyrics he had did in one of his songs that called for the uh, endorsement of bait rate. And I just want to get your take on that and also on the uh, LL Cool J and Brad Paisley song, uh, Ask Them a Racist. Have you heard that song at all? No, huh? Are you from, are you talking about basically LL Cool J did a guest verse. Well, it's basically about this country singer named Brad Paisley who talk, talks about why, you know, he wears Confederate flags and loves Leonard Skinner. That he just an accidental racist. That he didn't do the things to black folks, you know, like in the history. And then LL Cool J did a, a rap lyric that basically said, "If you forgive my gold chains, I forgive your iron chains." So he said basically that he's over slavery. So I know there's been a lot of do in, in the last week, but I just want to get your take on the Rick Ross and then on that, if you can make any commentary. Well, the Rick Ross, give me that. Give me that. Up. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about the the Freeway Rick. Nah, they, we, they took, he took his name from Freeway Rick, but he's oh, okay. a gangster rapper from uh, Miami. And he did a song about a uh, guest spot with this other rapper. that basically talking about, you know, putting Molly in a girl's drink and taking her home to have sex against her will. Oh, I guess they yeah. raped her. Yeah, and well, her, me and mm-hmm. doing that. Me and doing that. Let me tell you something. When I grew up, we had something... And I'm in town to believe that if you can give a sister some whiskey, right, you have a better chance of making it. Mm-hmm. So somebody took it to another level. You know, we can get this here and put this in. And and, uh, and so now, when we would go out, I don't know if it still happened now, but we would go out. The women at the table, when they had to go to the washroom, they'd all go together. We loved it, man, because we picked a little bottle of whiskey we had out and gin, what was it called, slow gin, because you couldn't smell it. Then right. the came out, you couldn't taste it. Enough. And when they go, we add a little bit more so they so they drank. And then you hear one say, oh, I don't know what got into me last night. I did, dear. <laughs> well, that's oh been, that's right. been going on for a long time. Mm-hmm. But didn't nobody write songs and brag about it? Right. Well, see, music... It's so important when it hits the brain. Uh, I was real close to John Lennon. Mm-hmm. And one day the way I met him, is my wife said, John Lennon's people called. Him and Yoko is drugged out in a cave in Amsterdam. Mm. And people said, if you get Dick Gregory, he can fix it. So I flew over. And I didn't know caves. Could look like Buckingham Palace, huh? <laughs> right. I mean, them caves is fabulous. Okay. Mm. So I go and, and now I did not know till after he was dead and a professor at San Diego was got the rights to, to do get some tapes from him and do a do a book. And he got that from Yoga, mm. his wife. And then it, he said after Dick Gregory came to. Amsterdam and straightened me and my wife out. We never went back to drugs again. I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah. And so we got that close. We are, I thought I took a little out of fast. And so I'm at his house one day, and he was showing me his financial records. He said from the time the Beatles was the Beatles, you know, before they broke up, mm-hmm. they made $87,000. Million. He said million. Okay. Dollars. And said, and he got the biggest year because he, he was writing, so he get that plus the writing. Mm-hmm. And he said, but that just represented, 87 million represented 3% of them that the agent ripped off the rest. You know, the one that wow. died in the swimming pool. Mm-hmm. So if you want to know what the agent made, you take $87 million and multiply it by 97. Oh, now, I say that to say this, so we talk. I say, well, man, that explains something to me. Why is it that the um, 
when they do the master. Why that? Why that cost a half a billion dollars? Mm-hmm. Is it because on the flip side of what you hear, you hear the real thing? You be listening to me, da 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 da. But in the flip side of it, what you really hear is the devil is God. The devil is God. The devil is God. Mm-hmm. How can you win when you don't know this, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and, and and so, consequently, we talking, and and he's telling me, and then he told me something because I don't I don't buy records, I don't I don't I want music. I listen to his opera, and I don't even understand it, but I know the rich folks <laughs> that control the world. That's all they do is listen to opera. I go all over the world, Budapest, in the summer, uh-huh. catching opera. I'll be right on the front row, the, the, the best ticket you can buy, and everybody scream, uh, you know, Bago, I don't know what. I roll me, I go, I go, and throw flowers up. I do all of that, man. But I, that's, mm-hmm. and so anyway, uh, when you think about that industry, and now here's what he told me: that those records, how involved the government was, CIA, British intelligence, because all those records was about drugs. I didn't know that. He told me, so you know how high you got to be to see a yellow submarine. <laughs> You know the song "Hey You." Mm-hmm. Do 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 do. Okay. Do you know any of the words of them? No sir. No, I say, do you know any of the words to it? No, I know the Lucy in the Sky and that with diamonds. Lucy in the Sky with diamonds. No, don't get to that yet. Uh huh. Hey, hey, you say it was about heroin. Okay. Take a sad song and make it what? Hmm. Either Lucy in the. You know that's about LSD, right? Right. Right. Okay, so that's what that was about. And we just put it out there, and they, them old sanctified folks, they, oh, you don't listen to it. they didn't know, they just could feel the vote. No, you listen to that stuff, them lipstick and all that stuff, women wearing pants, well, they didn't know this, but a woman's vagina breathes just like a human, because life comes through there. Mm. And when you shut that down, you get all kind of infections. That's why when they come out with the, the pantyhose, your vagina cannot breathe through nylon. And a couple of lawsuits went up. And the judge busted them, made them pay big money. And now you buy pantyhose, they got that thin strip of cotton right there so your mm. vagina can breathe. So there's so much stuff out here. You men that wash your socks, you know, and uh, you look at it, and if you have black socks, the water turns black. Mm-hmm. You, have, you have you have brown socks turn brown. And you never ask what kind of dye is this that never dries, huh? Mm-hmm. That I put on my feet and my feet breathes that stuff up through the pores. Mm-hmm. And they got it over such a small minute of time. You don't add all of that to what's going on. And so when you stop and think about, it. and the universe law is for every pound you weigh. If you weigh a hundred pounds. You're supposed to drink half that in ounces in water. Mm-hmm. You weigh 500 pounds, you're supposed to weigh 250 ounces of water every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you tune into the universe. So they take us away from that and put us into the with the other stuff. And then they got to the point now where they can put it on the label. And y'all get home uh, today, or those of y'all at home after the show, you got your toothpaste. There, I never understood how come my toothbrush have to stay in the bathroom. If you had a child that every time you gave him three meals a day, they take it to the toilet and eat it, you think something was wrong with it. But the toothbrush staying there all day, the sandwich ain't gonna last that long. Mm. I keep my toothbrush. I keep it in, in the freezer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so when you stop and think about this simple thing, and then as you think about that, then other stuff will open up. But now getting back to the the date rape, right? Mm-hmm. One, at any time you have sex, for any other reason than creating the universal God's new life, that's a violation. Mm. One day we'll find out that if a prostitute is running down the street naked, we have no right raping her. She still have rights. Mm. If I'm blacker than night, no white man back then had a right to lynch me just because I was. He didn't know me. Even if he did. But one of the best things, one of the best things happened in my lifetime happened a couple of weeks ago. Those two high school students, 
got found guilty for date rape. Right, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Then, then put the picture on the, across the world. She was all that drunk. She didn't know what she was doing. But let me tell you why. It's one of the best things that ever happened for me. I had seven girls and three boys, and most of us men have never sit down and told our boys how to react around. Well, I ain't talking about those about respect women and all that. I'm not gonna wait for you to open up the car door. Are you crazy? Mm-hmm. Uh, if me open up the car and make you a lady, you weren't a lady in the first place. Huh? Mm. Why do men walk outside of women? Because during the horse and buggy days, when the horses came by and it rained and splashed water up on the street to, and it get on you for it, get on her, huh? Mm-hmm. Ain't no horses now. Why are we still doing that? It must mm-hmm. not be that important. And so, so here's what happened. I'm going to ask you, when you was a little boy growing up, did your, your mother, father, pick your daddy, you know, sit down and tell you how to uh, behave around women? You know, no, no. Sex-wise no, no. and all that. Mm-mm. I never said, nobody ever told me, nobody ever said to me how to, you know, those two boys, and what's that little town in, in Ohio? Yeah, I know it's Ohio. I don't know. It's, it's not Stupidville, right? It's not Stupidville. No, like, well, now they watch that case all over the world. Right. They found them guilty, right? Mm-hmm. But students, which don't mean nothing, I say that for this reason. If they go and get 20 PhDs, they will never be able to find a job because they have to wear ankle brace mm. for the rest of their life. Mm-hmm. About the men of sex crime. They got oh, 48 states in America now. If you had to go and pee real bad and got up to a tree and pee, if the police come by and bust you, got to wear an ankle brace. Sex brace. I'm a sex offender the rest of your life. Now, fathers and mothers are a little bit different when they realize the penalty that I, as a man, have to pay. Before there were just women. Some would be so embarrassed. The father would commit suicide. The, suicide. the father would kill the daughter because somebody raped her and all that. No. Thank God I lived to see that happen. But for the first time, we got to be careful when our sons go out to the prom. Tell them how to act. Not because we give a damn about the woman, because your career. And he. So to the, to the brother that said about the daybreak. But it's been going on. It's been called different names. Huh? Mm-hmm. That's why you 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 take a woman and you you buy her what fifty dollars worth of rounds at the night mm-hmm. or, But you wouldn't you you wouldn't give us some money to get a gallon of milk for the baby. Mm. If we did, we talked about it. Okay, how much how much whiskey you want to drink? Because I think the drunk you go. The better I have a chance I have to get on. And all that's about to change because you got a new group of people coming. It's uh, amazing how many people I run into that's into celibate. It's amazing how many people into celibate. So you got anybody else on the line? Yeah, I want one more call and then we just wrap it up. But I appreciate you so much. I think this call want to speak, if I'm not mistaken. Eric code 317, you on the air? Brother Gregory. Hey, how you doing, Brother Gregory? Hey, my brother. Peace and love to you and the family. Thank you. Hey, uh, I want to just get an overview of uh, what you think about these black pastors uh, in this generation. Uh, it just sort of seems like, you know, you know, they do a good job of, you know, making fishes of women, but they don't do a good job of making fishes of men. And, uh, you know, not to beat up on these pastors, but, you know, a lot of them have sort of discouraged a lot of the black brothers just because of their behavior, and I just wanted to get your overview and your take. Well, let me just slow, slow up just a minute. Now, slow up a minute. What do you say? A lot of them make pictures of women? Well, you know, I mean, what? Well, no, I said a, a lot of them just give us a, a bad taste as far as, like I said, they, they make, they, they make like I said, the Bible says make fishes of men, but they make a lot of fishes of women. They fish a lot of women, but they don't fish a lot of men. 
Because you go to these churches, and 80, 90% of the, the, the people that attend churches are women. And they there yeah. swinging and hollering and, and this and that, and, and no one's trying to make any effort to go out here and save any of these brothers. Well, let me just say this here. They never said they did. The great thing about the, I've always said the strongest two forces in history of America is the black woman in the black church. And 98% of the forefront of the greatest movement in the history of the planet was the civil rights movement. And 98% of the leadership had revenue in front of their name before they had PhD. When the Catholic Church elevated a first cardinal, the Pope that was Polish, first time, 1.5 million white folks left the Catholic Church. <laughs> when, uh, when I was a little boy, going to a movie, every time the movie changed, and they showed those, those lecture chairs, somebody getting the lecture chair. It was always a priest leading them. So as a little boy, how could I think anything was wrong with the lecture chair when I see a priest? Leading them with the Bible. Huh? Right. So this isn't just what happening. This isn't just what happening. And so that again, so most folks get married, minister, somebody is. You know and and seventy eight percent of all marriages in America break up in divorce. So, what, so we just found it now, huh? Yeah. Anytime you got a Bible and a gun in the same house, that gun just canceled out the Bible because I'm saying, God, I know you the boss. I know you built everything, the sun, the moon, the ocean. But I don't believe you can, uh, don't believe you can take my family, so I got a gun. Huh? A yeah. gun and a Bible, the gun canceled the Bible out. I know you, Dad, but I don't believe you can protect me. So how long? The preacher's got guns. I went to church one time at a big, big wedding. And they had, they had cops there and, uh, and private security with a gun in the Bible. You at the church? I just read a story the other day. Y'all probably pull up in, uh, in uh, a Catholic nun got busted at over a 20-year period. She stole over $300,000 from the church to go to the next town to the casino. Mm. So a guy said, what do you think about it? I said, what I think about that? Well, before I think about to steal my money, I'm thinking about if a nun can't go to the casino and win, I bet not never go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a nun, she's the one. The church tell me about pray. Put your faith in what did you ever pray? To win. I remember when that, when that, uh, <clears throat> what was it, the, uh, the Powerball? First time mm-hmm. got the $400 million? Yes, sir. My mother always taught us don't never pray when you're gambling. I'm thinking, oh, I should know. I'm four years old. What you, I should know. I don't remember no gambling. <laughs> so I never prayed for gambling. And, and then when that lottery got up to 400 million, you think I didn't pray? I said, God, I know what my mama told me. She didn't know nothing. I'm not only asking you to win the Powerball, the 400 million. I'm saying I don't want to win with 12 other people. I think I could do that without prayer. Yes, sir. You know, and so again... You know, to the brother that, that, that said, those aren't the ones you worried about. Mm. I, I go to war, kill people, come back home, pop shot my mom in the head five times, and I don't do nothing about it. Mm-hmm. About it. I go to war. I would not. They say new or new law. We draft an Americans up to 80 years old. Or if you don't come, you go to the lecture chair. I would walk to the lecture. I wouldn't go to Canada. Huh? Mm. I'm going to violate my God and let some thug I ain't never met send me somewhere and kill somebody I don't know. And let me, let me, let me, let me take you this here. Punch up. Dick Nixon. Senator mm. McCain. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Arizona? Yes, sir. He was on his way before the fire squad and Dick Nixon pardoned him. Mm-hmm. Ain't that funny you can't read that nowhere? You'll hear Democrats talking about it. You'll hear Republicans mm-hmm. are talking about it. That's scary. Mm-hmm. Why? Because he turned traitor when they captured him. Mm-hmm. Your 
Brother Gregory? Yes. Oh, well, thank you once again. I mean, you've been very generous as usual with so your time. So let me just finish this. Let me finish this. Yes, sir. He made a record in Vietnam. For the mm-hmm. Vietnamese, he said, I am, I am a traitor. Mm-hmm. I'm a, a war criminal. I drop bombs on schools over here and kill women and children. Mm-hmm. All that's washed off the, the record. So again, to the to, to, to the brother that was asking me about you have to figure that out for yourself. You know, it didn't just start happening. The great thing about the church is free. I go to church when I was going in the wintertime. I was always warm. Summertime, I was always cool. Yes. So ain't nobody charging me to go. It's locked into my psyche because uh, <laughs> the father, yes, sir. they the ones that say, church, 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 church. And I look at that. I look at the whiskey my daddy was drinking. The women he would be with. Mm-hmm. And finally, to that question, America separates church and the state. So I went to high school in St. Louis, the Sumner High School Bulldogs, but we could have named it the Sumner High School Red Devils, Blue Devils, but we could never name it the Sumner High School Bring Jesus. Mm-hmm. But we can name it in a Christian society, name it after the devil. Our children come on with a helmet and a football jersey with a picture of a red devil and a pitchfork, and we Christians go to the game on Friday and pull for the devil. Go, oh, you devils. Hey, Christian, who are you from? The devils, I can ask. <laughs> but yet, I don't know where the black folk would have been without that black church. And the civil rights movement, mm-hmm. we couldn't rent buildings downtown. It was the church that was. That was always there. I didn't have a playground to go to. We went to summer school at the church. Mm-hmm. That's where we learned. There wouldn't have been no Aretha Franklin or, or powerful. There would have been no Negro actors. Where we learn how to act in the church during the, right. play, mm-hmm. during the Easter play. Mm-hmm. So all the summer when school was out and our mothers couldn't afford the work, everybody watched the church watch. We went to church during the summertime. So it's always been there, sort of needs. So that's where we are. Thank you much. Oh, you was going to say something. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm going to ask you, I don't want to wrap up. I know you've been very generous with your time and your insight and wisdom as usual. I just want to ask you this question because several people have asked me to ask you this question. And I know that you and your wife, you know, I mean, she's like a rock of Gibraltar for you, Sister Lillian Gregory. I've been married for over maybe no fifty years. Fifty four. Fifty four. That's amazing. Congrats to them. And people want to know, like, how can they find their Lily and Gregory or or Dick Gregory? Like, what makes y'all work so well and last so long? Um, well, it's a bad thing to get into because <laughs> this planet, the universe is controlled by numbers, mm-hmm. numerology. Okay. We hear people talk about arranged marriages. Mm-hmm. So what 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 day? What's the the number of the day you were born? Not the name of the day. What day you born? Uh, twenty three. Twenty three. Yeah, no such thing as two digits. So you add two and three together, you get one. Five. Okay, now I want you to count the holes. Two ear holes, right? Mhm. Two nose. That's four, right? Mhm. So you got the ear, the nose, two eyes. Yeah. Okay, that's six. Mhm. And the mouth. That's seven, right? Yes, sir. And eight, nine, Ewan, and the bow, right? Mm-hmm. There's nine planets to the universe. The number of God is nine. Mm-hmm. There's nine planets. To the universe. It's about numbers. And so what do I have to do to make my birthday equal nine? You, you were born 23rd, right? Yes, sir. So the woman you marry would have to be equal four. Four, 13, huh? 22. Mm-hmm. Then you complete. That's what that's about. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. And, and so, and so, now I didn't know this. I, I went into this one. We got married. That's uh-huh. how the universe protects you. Mm-hmm. You know? So now you got nine holes in your body, right? Mm-hmm. And if you were married, your lady had nine holes in her body, right? Right. So you add the two together, you get what? Uh, Eighteen. And then one and eight is what? Nineteen. You can multiply. No, one and eight is nine. 
Oh, uh, one eight now, so I'll think about it. Okay, I'm jumping again. Okay. You can multiply mm-hmm. nine by a trillion, million, billion, and you can never lose nine because when you add it all up, it will equal nine. So now, uh-huh. nine. So you go to the golf, 18 holes, right? Mm-hmm. That's the nine holes in you and nine holes in the female. So the real mm-hmm. folks know what golf how the game is a ritual. You say at 4.30 in the morning, and you say certain words over the nine female holes and certain words over the male hole. Mm-hmm. But they let the fool like me believe it's a game. You go play it. It's not all about numbers. It's all about what those numbers vibrate to. Oh, so wow. we just, just accidentally, and I got my wife pregnant. <laughs> my mother had taught us, you you boys get a girl pregnant, you marry her. Well, that didn't sound bad to me. She didn't say you had to stay with her. Right. So I told her, Lil, I said, you like you like this relationship? Said, yes. I called her the other day and I said, I love you, baby. I love you, baby. I love you. I said, do, it. Do, it. Do, it. do it. Do you like for me to tell you I love you? Sure I do. I said, do you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> I told her a long time ago, it's never about love if you want this to work. It's about can you be lovable. I mean, mm-hmm. I hear somebody say, I love you, baby. If I can't have you, ain't nobody going to have you. No, it's about being yeah. lovable. Lovable. And you lovable, I'm safe with you, and you're safe with me. Mm-hmm. Well, Brother Greg, I want to thank you once again for all your wisdom. And I'm glad I asked that question. And I look forward to sharing with people. And, uh, you know, we, just, we love you madly. You are very lovable, sir. And you keep on doing what you're doing. I look forward to connecting with you again in the near future. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Jackie Robinson, go see it. Quick. Oh, yeah, 42. It's take, great. Take the children. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Thank you, baby. Bless you. God bless. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.